Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I had so much fun yesterday recording some of the parsing stuff that I am continuing on today. It's January 27th. Uh, I only have time to get one or two sessions in. But I wanted to continue on with making the parsing logic work. We were working on the parentheses and I was going to... Uh, I needed to make it negative when there was a parenthesis. Um, and I was going down a road that I've decided not to do. So. Start by just declaring whether or not there's a boolean, and then I'm going to do a, just a quick little thing like that. Uh, some of you might not like this formatting. I'm not sure if I like it, but um, it's okay. All in all, actually, this this parsing code is is anything but pretty, but it's very specific to our situation here. What I want to do is I want to allow the user to write. Um, to, to type in a number without errors popping up or, you know, error bars or anything like that while they're starting to type the number. So if they type an open parenthesis, I don't want it to say error, I just want it to treat it as a zero and so forth. Um, while still catching errors that are legitimate errors, like starting with a closed parenthesis or something like that. But generally, fairly... Uh, Fairly lenient, but not quite as lenient as the built-in parser, which would strip out characters in the middle of a number. Like if you type 123x456, it would interpret that as 123,456. I don't want that. That just doesn't seem right. Um, so there we go. We've got that working. And this is this is cheesy, but um, it will work. Yes, it will work. Ah, it's always risky making predictions like that. So, what do we have next? We've got number in parenthesis, um, open parenthesis. And number. I think these will both work. As is. Yep, okay. Let's uh, give that a shot. So, nothing is fine, numbers are fine, commas are fine, uh, minus signs are fine, parentheses are fine, um, but, oh, that's interesting, I didn't expect that to work. Oh, no, it's not working, I just wasn't seeing the errors come up. Yeah. Uh, close parenthesis only is fine, but don't put a number after it. You can put a number inside of it, but... You know what, I don't think I want just a closed parenthesis to be okay. Um, so I'm going to make a note of that, because we're not dealing... Um, we're not dealing with illegal numbers yet. Okay, so we're parsing a negative number. I believe we are parsing uh, minus dollar sign. Yeah. Um, that should be illegal. We want to format it as negative, a red negative. Um, but I want to come back to that. So let's... So what I want to do is I want to take care of of the illegal values first. We've answered who should be taking care of formatting. Um, we are handling the text parsing. An application frame. Let's see. Yep. 
Do we have a... Yeah, we've got a to-do on that. Let's see what other to-dos we've got going. This is left over. I did that a few episodes ago. Um, that's still coming up. Because it's... Put that in the scratch pad. So an application frame. I don't always remember to look at the to do's, which is why I'm typing it in there. Okay, so that's good. That's going to come out. Um, so this is done, but we need to strip out error handling or exception handling from application frame dot starting balance field. Pretty sure we've taken care of that. Um, this is bigger swingy stuff. This is pretty sure that's out of date. Okay. So next up is uh, dealing with illegal dollars, and this this is really interesting in my opinion. A um, long time ago, I ran across a design pattern called the null object pattern, and I just love it. Um, this is the idea that when you have, when it's possible for a, a domain object to have an invalid value, rather than using a null reference, you know, you know, like this, this kind of null, rather than using that to signify that it's invalid, use an actual object. Uh, subclass your original object with the special object, which signifies uh, invalid values and um, that eliminates all kinds of repeated logic checking for null and stuff like that you can just have that code work properly it's really really quite cool I've always I always enjoy doing it and this feels like the perfect place to deal with it we need when we get an invalid value we need to have some sort of representation of that and I think the appropriate representation is an invalid dollars object so um, that's what I want to do next. In order to get there, I think the first thing I need to do is to subclass dollars as a valid dollars, um, or turn the existing dollars class into a valid dollars class uh, without changing any of the references to it. So everybody who's using dollars is going to keep using dollars, but internally inside the domain layer, all that lo all this logic here is going to go down into valid dollars. So I need to do that. Um, so I can't just say rename to valid dollars because that would change everybody. So I'm not sure if I can extract a subclass. Uh, I can extract a superclass, but I don't see a way to extract a subclass. I don't use most of these automated refactoring. So I'm kind of old school and do a lot of it myself. Um, so you know what? I'm going to just do it manually for the most part. So we're going to need a valid dollars class. We're going to have that extend dollars extends dollars. Um, we want it to have a private constructor, not a private constructor, but a um, not a public constructor. Just a package specific constructor. We don't really want anybody else imp uh, instantiating this guy.
and then all the constructors that we have here we're going to go down there a little window that popped up by the way was just some sort of subversion integration thing that isn't working right I've never taken the time to figure it out Okay. And to start with, I'm just going to do that. That should work. I shouldn't have any problems with that. Um, yeah, that works just fine. Now for my next trick, I need to get rid of these guys. And will that do it? No, because of the funky definition of protected in Java. And that's not going to work either. Is it? Huh. There we go. Looks like nobody's using this one that takes an integer. Um, yes, yeah, so that broke valid dollars too. Okay, so what we need to do is do a global find and replace across the entire workspace. Anything that starts with dollars, we need to change to valid dollars. Boy, I hope I got that right. Haha! <laughs> that worked. There. So, um, next up is starting to push down these methods. So, I'm going to make this protected for now so I can access it. I make this I don't think I want to leave where it's at okay I'm going to make this abstract now. Uh, no, I can't make it abstract while it's still constructible. Um, yeah, I should be able to just push this down. See how that works. Does that still work? No. Why not? Oh, because... Um, I can't just push it down like that. I have to Oh, I can't have a constructor in an abstract class. All right. There we go. Now I'm going to want to push down minus. And subtract to zero. Such a terrible method name. Make sure that still works. And um, we'll keep on going with the next episode. 
So thanks everybody for watching. That's it for this time. I'll catch you next time.